We Were Hyphy is a music documentary that highlights the sounds, the vibe, the people that brought that genre to life right here in the Bay Area. Director Lawrence Madrigal and producer Jason O'Mahony joins me now to talk about the documentary. First of all, thanks for being here. Thanks for um, talking about this. And, you know, this watching the preview that I saw you posted online, I haven't seen the whole documentary, obviously, but it, it really, I really felt the vibe and what you guys are trying to say. It almost felt like a love letter of, you know, just like a love song in the way to the time and to the movement. So tell people who aren't familiar a little bit about what hyphy is so they kind of understand. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think you, you hit it right on the nose. It's, it's a love letter to the hyphy movement and what hyphy was for, for people that may not um, have been here during, during the movement was it was a, a cultural um, and musical movement that sparked in the early 2000s, um, really hitting its peak in 2006 in the Bay Area. Um, uh, and it's basically started with a kind of subgenre of hip hop and kind of a mentality that went with it. Um, and then it kind of just grew into all these different um, kind of like different other like creative areas along with music. So there's the dance element, there's this whole car culture, um, that, 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 that comes along with it. Then there's also like the slang, the way everyone was speaking back then and the fashion, but it all is encompassed by kind of this like spirit of like individuality and like kind of like expression. Um, and yeah, that's the, that was the hyphy movement. Yeah. Yeah, it was a wonderfully unique kind of a time. And I first became aware of it when Larry started telling me stories about it. And there was just such sort of almost a magical quality to it that it was something that I thought would make an amazing film. Because if it was so interesting to me as somebody who grew up in Ireland and sort of had never heard of Hyphy, I felt perhaps it could be like super interesting to people from all over the world as well. And so Larry told me the stories. And I was like, yeah, we have to make a film about this because the stories just blew my mind. And hopefully we've kind of captured some of that kind of magical quality about what Hyphy was and what it meant to the people growing up at the time. Well, and I think it holds a very special place here in the Bay Area, being that this is where the origins are. So tell us a little bit about how kind of the movement got launched and here in the Bay Area. Yeah, um, I mean, I think it, it, it started off, like I said, in, in music and so, some of the really important, you know, um, like kind of like like uh, creators of, the, uh, of it early on were, you know, um, Too Short, you know, the, the, he's like one of the godfathers of, of, of all Bay Area rapists. But yeah, Hyphy, he had a big hand in. Um, and then, you know, even E40 early on and then E40 later on as well, taking it to the next level. But Mac Dre really was the the kind of originator of not just the music, but the kind of mentality and the kind of look and feel of it. Um, and then I think from there that kind of got past this next generation where you have like Keek the Sneak, Mr. Fab um, and all those guys. Uh, and then it, and then from there, it kind of like got into the streets and grew into all the all the all the fans kind of contributed as well. And then it became more than just music. It became like a whole, you know, kind of cultural moment and movement. I think that was one of the important things as well, that sort of interaction between the fans and the artists. Like the fans were so supportive of the artists, but it was almost like this sort of like a love relationship. And so the, the fans at the time that were growing up, even people like Kamaya or people like Cheezy, who were sort of younger fans then, sort of felt this love and this protection from the, the older artists. And they kind of gave a hand to the younger artists to grow up. So there was this lovely kind of connection between um, the fans and the artists. And you hear about that in the story because a lot of these artists and even the ones who were very influenced by them are featured in the documentary. Yeah. Yeah. We were lucky enough to talk to, to Kamaya, Pilo, uh, g -Eazy, that kind of knew that, that the, the latest class of, of, of uh, Bay area, uh, like superstars. And they, they just had nothing but amazing things to say about how impactful the movement was and how impactful those, those, those artists that, that, that created high feet like was to them. And really they're, they're just trying to like, take hyphy keep it alive and evolve it to the next step you know and we were kind of looking at that as well we're almost uh, beneficiaries of that sort of generosity because when larry and i first set out to make this film it was almost four years ago and we first set out to make like a little five minute piece that might appear on youtube but from speaking to people they always said oh you have to speak to this other person and like one interviewee would introduce us to the next interviewee and then the piece kind of grew from this small simple little five minute youtube piece into a 10 or 12 minute piece that potentially might appear at film festivals and now it's an 85 minute feature and i think that's a reflection almost of the generosity both of the artists and of the fans of of hyphy so even though it was this kind of a madcap time it was also this wonderfully generous like generous time where if somebody saw you trying to do something they kind of give you a boost and give you a hand up which was which was an amazing thing for me to see 
That's very cool. And I think that's important because it wasn't just the music. It trickled down, like you said, to the people, the clothes, the culture, just the vibe of what it was here in the Bay Area and all of that music. What do you hope people who watch it now, maybe people who experienced it versus people who are learning about it for the first time, what do you hope to they, they take away from seeing this documentary? Yeah, no, absolutely. And like we we, we set out like like Cy si edited it as well and editing it was like we kind of set out to have two audiences for this. And one was the, the, the Baydestrians that grew up during the movement. And we, for them, we just wanted it to be like a love letter to the movement and a, nostal a fun nostalgic trip back, but also a look deeper inside of it beyond maybe there's elements to it that they didn't like necessarily uh, experience all the way. Like maybe if they were really into the car culture, they didn't get to do, do so much with the dance. So it was kind of like a nostalgic kind of gift for them. But then it was also, we were really, really trying to mold it to also reach to a, a completely outside audience and kind of use it as like a education piece on like, this is where it came from. This is what it is. And this is how, you know, you can continue to enjoy it to this day. You know, I think um, what we would love is for anybody that watches this to sort of go back and discover the artists for themselves. Like at the heart of the hyphy movement, there's amazing music. And so if you grew up during the Bay um, or during the hyphy movement in the Bay at the time, you know exactly what that music is. You know who the amazing artists are. But if this is your first time seeing it, if this is your first time learning about hyphy, then go back, do a quick Google search for hyphy and you will just be inundated with like amazing tracks from amazing artists. And so what we would love for the film to do is sort of, I suppose, reignite that love of hyphy music and hyphy artists. Yeah, and, and if I can add one more thing too, it's just like exposing like, other like subgroups too, like the turf fiends and ice oh. cold and like, you know, the car culture and, 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 and kind of like sideshow tone and, and just see, seeing all these other extra little things that may not have been on the, like the MTV kind of feature that, that happened in 2006. Right. Yeah. That dancing in the rain video from the turf things was absolutely amazing. It was one of the first things that Ari showed me and just that kind of physicality of movement. It, it, it was just amazing to be able to see something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see the whole thing. So how do people watch? How do they check it out? Well, all they need to do is they go to our Instagram or go to our uh, website. Our Instagram is at we were hyphy, or our website is we were hyphy, and there's actually links to the tickets um, there. The film is playing at CineQuest. CineQuest starts on the 1st of April and runs all the way through to the 17th of April. So you can buy a ticket for just $3.99 um, uh, on either our website or our Instagram. Are you guys submitting it to festivals? Are you trying to make the rounds there as well? Yeah, we've submitted it to a couple of festivals. Um, CineQuest was the first that said yay to us. So we've uh, another couple that we've submitted it to. And we're really looking forward to bringing this uh, wider. We're hoping to play in Ireland as well, which would be amazing. Because I think the hyphen movement will kind of blow people's minds back in Ireland. So hopefully we'll play in one or two Irish festivals too. Yeah, and we're, we're working to try and do a, a Grand Lake Theater uh, screening at the end of the summer too. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, that would be very, very cool. Anything else you would like to add? I think just like yeah. I hope, I hope, uh, I hope those that, that experience hyphy that this this stands up to to the the memories and, and and you know maybe encourages those people to jump back into that old playlist of all the cool hyphy songs and then for all the new people I hope I hope you <clears throat> enjoy it and and you know like learn something and and yeah discover some of the music for yourself as well. Jason, anything else you'd like to add? I'd say just to say thank you to the generosity of everybody that we spoke to that helped us make the, the, the film because Larry and I kind of bootstrapped this so we called in a ton of favors from numerous people that we were working with and then the generosity of the people that we spoke to um, and, and for them sharing their stories with us. It, it was genuinely, um, it was a fun experience for us, you know, it was a wonderful journey. So thank you to everybody that helped. Yeah, thank you.